writing Y. What are we writing? We are writing T instead of Y. Symbol for time period. And what's my gradient? M was the maths teacher's gradient. Physics teacher's gradient is a number, which is 1.25. And your X is not X of maths teacher, but physics teacher will prefer to have a quantity, which is going to be mm. which one? There is this and this. Which one are you going to pick out of those two? One over D. So one over D. Intercept is zero. Do you really, even if you don't write that, that's okay. But if it had an intercept, Whatever the value on y-axis is, let's suppose that was 0.1, then you will write plus 0.1. If by chance in one's line go like this, that's your base fit line. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. In that case, the only thing is going to change if this is negative 0.1. So you will write t is 1.25. 1 over d minus 0.1. That's your equation perfectly fine. Don't panic. Why my line is going there? Another thing. Sometimes what happens, the way you pick the graph paper, the way you put the scale, almost at the end you have this, and that's your y, but your line is actually going there. Please don't leave the line floating here. Okay. Ask your teacher to give you another graph paper, glue that graph paper underneath, or maybe any white paper underneath, extend the scale on that side as well, work out the intercept. You need to show the intercept if there is any in your equation in order to get this grade or higher grade. Okay, no intercept in your equation, that means your equation is wrong, this is where you end up. Okay, so now the equation is this for this line. One more thing you need to work on is the unit for the gradient. And how do we work out the unit? I'll quickly give you an explanation and then maybe in tomorrow's session we'll do some more practice on writing the units for the gradient. Gradient is, how do we calculate gradient? Rise over run. Now rise is change in t in this situation and the run is change in d or 1 over d. Change in 1 over d. That's what your run is. Okay. What's the unit for time period? The unit is seconds. So you will write that unit. What's the unit for 1 over d? 1 over m. So the unit is 1 over m. Please do not leave it like this. That that's my unit for the gradient. Simplify it a little bit more. Either you can leave it like this, m minus 1, because 1 over m is m minus 1, or this can further be simplified as this n. Because n goes up, becomes positive now. Because we were dealing with not just d, 1 over d. So that's the unit for gradient. So your gradient when you write is 1.25 sn. Where sn is the unit for gradient. Any questions so far? Should we move forward? Yep. Okay. Now we will go. This is what we have understood in terms of graphing, relationship, unit, mathematical equation. Now I'm going to take you from further from boom. You've written down the aim. What next is needed in your report? Physics teachers do not want a method that I picked up.
up all the gear, I did this, I did that. No, sorry, we don't need it. You're only worried about your position, accuracy, errors if you have encountered any, and the variables. That's what we basically need in your aim. And again, not really, we don't need any hypothesis as well. We're fine, we don't like any predictions before doing experiments. Okay, aim is done and now you get into variables. You have identified your variables, but now you need to explain those variables. First thing is independent variables. Now in this situation, your independent variable is distance. So first we write, what is your independent variable? Next you have to write the range. So what or which one? Range, what range is given here? The range for distance is given 20 to 80 centimeter range. You have written down this, sorted for a chief. You have written down the range, sorted for parent. But independent variable explanation and discussion is actually marked to excellence grade. In order to get excellence, you need to justify your range. So for independent variable, these three things need to be covered. W, R, J. W, which one, what, what variable? R is the range and K is justify. Justify your range. Justification means why are you using 20 as your lowest number and why are you using 80 as your biggest number. Again, if you try to do this before doing experiment, you might struggle to write the justification. But once you perform the experiment, you know the limitations of the gear, then you can justify the range really well. Like in this situation, Though we, have, we are not doing the experiment, but we have the results. 20 centimeter was giving us the time period of 41.3 seconds for 10 oscillations, okay? And 80 was giving us time period of 10.3 for 10 oscillations, okay? What's happening? As you are increasing the distance, what's happening to the time period? The time period is getting smaller. That's how it's an inverse relationship. You increase the distance, time period gets smaller. Or you decrease the distance, time period gets bigger. 41.3 seconds. In reality, you will say 41.3 seconds is very quick. It's hardly any time. But in terms of physics, that's quite a big time, 41.3 seconds. Imagine the bar is in air, suspending at an angle. It's going back and forth like this. That's when you are measuring the time period, okay? 41 seconds when it is doing that. In reality, you will notice when you do the experiment, in order to turn, you have twisted the bar by this angle, you have given the oscillation by shifting it to that angle. Under ideal condition, if you are performing experiment in vacuum, there's absolutely no air. If we keep on going that way, at that angle, for as long as you want, no energy loss. But here what's happening, there's air in the room. So when you are getting those 10 oscillations, you will notice Every time it's not going back to the same place, it's kind of becoming smaller and smaller. A little bit smaller, not that big, just to show you the distinction. In order to maintain the bar at same angle for that long, 
becomes difficult. So if you go maybe at 10 or 5 centimeter, this time period becomes so big that it's not a controlled variable. You want to keep this angle constant, but that angle doesn't stay constant if the time is increasing because the bar is in air for longer time. Okay? And how do we write that in justification? Uh, at 20 centimeter, which is my lower limit, for distance, the amplitude annual of oscillation is affected due to air resistance. Now you will say, yes, we are blown away with this physics language. We can't write about this. Fine. You can't write amplitude of oscillation, but you can write at 20 centimeter, which is the low limit for distance, the air resistance affect the oscillation. Can you write that? Air resistance affect the oscillation as it is exposed to more time. Certainly we can write that way at your level, even if amplitude is a new word for you. And that explains. And what happens on the higher limit? You're not justifying the lower limit. You're also justifying 80 centimeter. What's happening at 80 centimeter? It's becoming small. Okay. What happens if it gets smaller than 10 seconds? Further down, let's suppose you've done 100 in one meter. Okay. And that's what you're looking at. It might come closer to two or three seconds. Remember human reaction. Sometimes we cannot react that quickly. So the time is becoming smaller and smaller. It is hard to monitor because of human reaction error. Average reaction time is 0.2 seconds, but you never know. Somebody could be like me. I don't react quickly. I am slow in my reactions. So that is going to affect the results. So that is why we don't want anything more than 80 or whatever number you have decided. Beyond 80 centimeter, uh, sorry, yeah, 80 centimeter, it becomes difficult to record time due to human reaction time error. Okay. We could be or should we we could go a little we can give you more fifteen minutes. Okay. So this is all still going on about independent variables. Any question? You write this much detail, there's absolutely no doubt not getting tick for E for independent variable columns. Next, dependent variable. It is easy. Again, the things that you're writing for dependent variable, which one, what is your dependent variable, how to measure any difficulties encountered. So it could be either any difficulties encountered or at 
accuracy. How do you make sure that your measurements are accurate? So you're elaborating on these points, and I think dependent variable is also marked at excellent square. Uh, next session when you come, I'll make sure those uh, uh, links are opened and we will show you what exactly is required for marking at each, for each of the part of the report. Dependent variable, we know which one dependent variable here is time. And how will you measure? I will measure it using a stopwatch. Fine, that's a year nine, year 10 answer. So, measure time period using a stopwatch. for 10 oscillations. Why are we doing 10 oscillation, not one oscillation? Because period is one back and forth movement. That's one period, that's what we want. But why are we going for multiple readings here? Because you explain that, which is what, how to measure any difficulties. You're, you're kind of covering the difficulties and accuracies together there. The reason we do 10 oscillation as it is difficult to measure time for one oscillation due to human Write down how much that is, 0.2 seconds. 0.2 second value is quite a big one. Imagine if you are monitoring one oscillation, which was 0.42, plus you have 0.2 into it as error. So that means your reality, your thing is this. Whereas when you do 10 oscillation, your period is this, plus and minus 0 0.02, so it becomes 4.22. So this two is actually very minor in comparison to 0.2, okay? So that is why we do for uh, 10 oscillation, because human reaction time error is 0.2 seconds, and for one period, this error, is minimized to or become really, very tiny, 0 0.02 seconds. That's one thing you need to cover. So you're sorted for which, how, difficulty, little bit on accuracy, but you still need to cover one more thing for accuracy, either here or somewhere in your report. What is your other accuracy improving technique? Because when you do experiment, there are a lot of random errors. And how do we minimize random errors? By repeating it at least three times. So next thing you will write for dependent variable is do at least three repeats to minimize random errors and make sure your results are independent variable, I just remembered, I'll write down in red. Another thing you can write is, because that range, 20 to 80 centimeter range, it gives a good spread of data to 
and the lungs. Okay, that's why you just limit it to that. You could have gone further and it's not affecting those things. But once you've got a good spread of data, by the way, you keep on repeating some other distances. Okay, so you can add this also in there. And in fact, this kind of a wording can fit in any report. Partly for justification, not complete justification. Done? Independent, dependent. Now the last one, and I think that's marked only at merit. The only reason I forget about those things is the marking schedule is a bit different for your class and level three. And when you teach both the classes together, it becomes confusing for us to remember which one is marked at which level. Controlled variables. Now controlled variables are the variables that needs to be kept same to ensure it's a fair test. Besides those two, time period and the distance, rest all things that you're using in your experiment are kept the same. Okay. Now this is really tricky one to mark and quite funny at times when we mark because a lot of things people write under controlled variable from physics point of view. Yes, from experiment point of view they're important, but from physics point of view they are irrelevant. I use the same Redox test. Okay. Please, that's not that important variable. I use the same ruler. Not really, that's not important. I use the same stopwatch. Again, that's not very important variable to control. You are going to think in terms of that experiment, which was this suspension rod. We had one here, one here. So what are the controlled variables important? In this particular one, the most important controlled variable is what you are changing is you're changing this distance okay from this distance is what you're changing all the time the things other things that are important one is the length of the string on both the sides you're keeping that as constant the length of suspension cord. Suspension strength. You're keeping that as constant. That is important variable. Another very important variable when I was thinking about discussion for this experiment, there's always a center of the rod. Like this is your suspension rod and it has a middle point, okay? Make sure these strings that are 80 centimeter apart, suppose, the last one, the gap here is 80 centimeter. But make sure from the middle, 40, 40 on this side. And why do we need that? We will discuss that in the discussion. So make sure the center point is decided and each of the string is 40 centimeter apart. Or the another important variable is from the center of the rod, the strings are equidistant. That is another one. Can somebody tell me any other important variable? I've covered the difficult ones. Easy. Any other easy? Yes. Pardon? Excellent. Angle of displacement. Anytime you are measuring your time period, whatever distance, you are rotating the rod to the same angle. Okay. And another thing to remember here is, if you take that angle too big, suppose you try to take it really, really big angle there, that's not going to be a good experiment result.
this out. Ideally, whenever you're dealing with any kind of pendulum, you will be working on this even next year, any kind of pendulum, this angle should not go beyond 25 degrees. In fact, better to stick to 10 to 20 degrees, okay? Because otherwise, kind of doesn't behave like a pendulum. There are lots of other factor that comes in. Okay, so the angle of displacement kept the same. The rod itself, don't change the rod. Same rod. Okay, so you have identified at least three controlled <coughs> variables and then you have to explain why do we need to control them? What will happen if we do not control them? Length of the suspension strain. The length also affects oscillation or time period. Again, you will say, I didn't knew that. I didn't have that knowledge. You're not writing a report in one go. You're not completing everything in one day. Controlled variable, explanation should be physics related. Okay, don't just say length is going to affect the experiment. Specifically say what exactly is going to be affected by the length. Go home, do some research. That these are the things I'm thinking to control. This is the experiment. What other things can affect this experiment? So try to work out some, do some research and give an explanation physics related. This is very easy to find out this particular one because next year itself, when in fact you have done an experiment. All of you have done simple pendulum. Mr. Kali, your class has done simple pendulum yeah, experiment. Yeah. yeah. You have come across this equation. L over G. And this is quite a key equation in next year's mechanics. Time period is affected by the length. Okay. And if you do research, heaps of resources on this. Okay. So length is affected by time period. From the center of rod equidistance, can I leave this explanation for now? I will cover it with discussion. Okay, because I don't want I can spend rest of the time, may I actually need about 20 minutes to explain you this, because this is going to go into top FR relationship. Okay, next, angle of displacement kept the same. Bigger angle. Rod is in air for more Distance, air resistance will affect energy changes. Energy transformation, when it is moving, kinetic energy, but because of air resistance, is getting changed to heat energy as well. Energy is going to be quite a helpful thing in your discussion bits, okay? So make sure you read the last part of mechanics topic, energy transformation, energy conservations, really well. Relating kinetic to gravitational, gravitational to heat energy, elastic, whatever you could think of, various forms of energy, have that good understanding because energy changes, you will be writing about this in discussion or some way with your controlled variables. Same rod, naturally, if you use different rod, mass will change. And for your understanding at your level, had it been the next year's class, then this explanation will change because we will bring the rotational motion. You haven't learned rotational motion here, but for your understanding, just focus on second law of Newton. When you are oscillating it, naturally you're giving a slight force to it, and you're trying to keep that force constant all the time, but force is dependent on these two quantities, 
mass and acceleration, second law of Newton. If the mass will change, certainly that will have an impact on the given force, control variable. And I think we should stop here. The things that we need to cover after this table, how exactly my table should be drawn in order to have the results. And after table, little bit revisiting on graphs, calculation, and conclusion. And lastly, the most important thing for excellence is discussion. So we've covered quite a bit, only four more things to go.